Okay, let's look at a sample problem. This is sample problem 19.4 from the book, the book being Vector Mechanics for Engineers, Statics Dynamics, 9th edition, Beer and Johnston. And the problem is this. Determine the period of small oscillations of a cylinder with radius small r, which rolls without slipping inside the curved surface of radius large r. So you can see I've drawn it here. There's a large cylinder, radius big R, and inside is this smaller cylinder of radius small r. And this is going to roll up and down. We, let's see, I guess we'll give it a little kick. It's up here, rolls back and forth and back and forth. Um, clearly there's gravity affecting this, and so we'll have to take that into account. Okay, and here's our strategy. We want to write the apply the conservation of energy between theta equals some maximum and theta equals zero. So we'll characterize this um, the rolling of this green cylinder by an angle theta. We'll say theta equals zero when it's right in the center at equilibrium. When it rolls slightly to one side we will call that the maximum. And remember that the whole key here is we're talking about small oscillations and so we're going to use the small angle approximations where the sine of theta is equal to theta and the cosine of theta is equal to 1 minus theta divided by theta squared divided by 2. Okay so how do we solve this? Well here's our strategy. We, here's a strategy here. We're going to apply conservation of energy between theta equals some maximum angle and theta equals zero. And again, remember I, I've drawn this to make it easier to see, but theta is a small angle. It's a small oscillation. So here, here's our angles. We're going to characterize this moving of the, the green cylinder by an angle theta. And the angle theta is between, we'll draw a line like this, between one position and here. And so theta is this angle here. Theta equals zero is when it's at equilibrium and it goes up to some theta equals max here and then the, the green cylinder will roll back down and across to the other side. So I just want to calculate the the total energy that's the kinetic plus the potential energy at two positions when theta equals zero straight down here and when theta is equal to a maximum up here. So if we calculate the total energy at the two positions, it should be equal. So we'll take the sum of the kinetic plus the potential energy here, plus the, and that should equal the sum of the kinetic plus the potential energy here. Let's do this first at the maximum angle. So we're first working at this one. And at the maximum, let me write here theta, Oh, goodness. Okay, at the maximum angle, we have almost by definition here that the velocity will be zero. And therefore, the kinetic energy will be zero. So all we need to do is calculate the potential energy which we're using the symbol V. And the potential energy, we're going to have to um, look at some trigonometry here to get this potential energy just right. So that potential energy will be equal to the, the weight of the cylinder times the height. Now we need to write an expression for the height. And as I said, this will depend on the geometry. It'll, we can look at it this way. And we're going to look at it. So this this height here, note that this position right here is at a height, we'll call it r minus, big R minus little r. So that's this whole thing, big R minus little r. And so we'll write that here, big R minus little r. Now, what we're concerned with is the height as a function of angle. 
So that's this height here, the center of mass of that cylinder. And, and through a little geometry, we can work it out and see that it's really big R minus little r times 1 minus the cosine of theta. Well, for small angles, we use this small angle approximation, which is that the cosine of theta, here's the small angle, so I'm going to write here small angle cos theta, we'll use this approximation, equals 1 minus theta squared over 2. Now, of course, the, the small angle approximation, when you say it this way, the theta is always in radians. Okay, so we can use this small angle approximation and, and substitute in for cosine theta, 1 minus theta squared over 2. And so for the, once we do that, we get this, that the potential energy is equal to the weight times the big R minus the little r theta squared divided by 2. And of course the kinetic energy is 0, so the total energy is equal to this potential energy here. So, so we've got the total energy at theta is equal to the maximum, and again this is only valid for um, small angles because we took this small angle approximation. So next we have to calculate the total energy at theta equals 0. Okay, now again, we need to calculate the um, poten the total energy at the theta equals maximum. We just, the, at the theta equals um, the minimum. We just calculated it at the theta equals maximum. So again, let's first let's define a few variables. What we need to know is the velocity of the center of mass. And so I'll write it this way, x dot, and that's the center of mass velocity that we're looking for. I'll just put that in here, cm. And what what we need to know, so we're going to do it in terms of this theta. And so we it's pretty simple. It's just this radius, which again, that's the big R minus the little r. So that'll give us that radius. Big R minus little r times the rate at which that angle is changing. We'll call that theta dot. Okay, so we've got the center of mass velocity. And the next thing we need to do is write an expression for omega, this omega, which is the rate at which the green cylinder is rotating. So when we're going to calculate the um, kinetic energy of this green cylinder, it's going to have two components, one that's related to the center of mass velocity, but a second that's related to its rotational velocity. So we know, or we could work out here, that the rotation of this cylinder, this green cylinder, should be equal to the expression we just wrote down, the center of mass velocity, divided by the radius of this green cylinder. So it ends up being like this, where we've just got big R minus small r divided by the small r times the time derivative of the angle. Now we just need to write the um, total kinetic energy, which we'll call T, and it's just equal to a half times the mass times the velocity of the center of mass. I'm going to write it this way, that squared, so it's a half mv squared, plus the contribution from the rotational energy, which is a half times the moment of inertia, i, times omega, the rotational frequency squared. So there's our kinetic energy. We just need to substitute in. We've got a half. We've got the mass. Um, we'll put in this squared up here, plus a half. I, we need I for a, a cylinder. It's just one half mr squared. And then omega squared. So we'll just substitute in this squared. So I'm going to write this rather long expression out.
and then and once I write it out it looks a bit like it looks just like this we've got the kinetic energy so remember I, I wrote this out so a half times the mass times the, um, the, the center of mass velocity squared so that's r minus r theta dot so you see the big r minus little r squared theta dot squared plus one half i omega squared so here's one half i is one half m r squared that's the i there and then the omega squared is just from right up here it's big r minus little r divided by the little r squared theta dot squared so here we have an expression for the kinetic energy at uh, the position at the pl at the bottom at the equilibrium position so and also at the equilibrium position we've got it such that the um, potential energy is going to be zero so we know that the total energy is equal to that expression so now what we have to do is go back and let's take a look at that if I could do so so let's see we go back here I'm gonna shrink this down a bit move back over okay so here we go we've got at, at one position here this is going to be our total energy and that's at the at the equilibrium position and at the other position our total energy is going to be this and so we set this expression equal to this expression. And from that, we should be able to calculate the frequency uh, or the, and the period. Okay, so I've rewritten it here on a clean sheet of paper so we can get going. Um, and again, so we had the, we have the two conditions. We're going to say conservation of energy applies here. So the, the total energy um, at one position is equal to the total energy at another position. And we choose the two positions such that in one position all the energy is potential and none of it's kinetic. So that's kind of the maximum displacement. Um, and we get this expression, the, the kinetic energy is zero. The potential energy is the weight times big R minus little r. And that whole quantity times theta squared over two. N and then we set that equal to another position and in this position we've got it such that all the energy is kinetic energy and the potential energy is zero. So in this case I've, I've simplified what I just wrote down before and brought the terms together so that we've got it this way. It's three-fourths times the mass times this quantity the big R minus little r squared times theta dot squared and then we're going to add in the potential energy here which is zero. So here we go we've got this expression what we need to do is two things we need to recognize that the weight since we've got the weight here the mass here we'll write it down substitute the weight is equal to the mass times g and the other thing we need to do is realize this is that the frequency we're looking at we've got theta dot and that's the angular velocity and we can write this where the this is omega let me try and differentiate that from w times theta and in this case we're looking at the maximum angular velocity the, or the angular velocity Let's see the max, the maximum it gets, which would be at the um, the low point when the potential energy is zero, the kinetic energy is maximum, and that maximum angular velocity it obtains theta dot for the maximum is equal to omega times the maximum angle it it obtains. So with, with these two relationships, and I should clarify this. Let me try and do this as a weight capital W and this is weight capital W which is different than this omega um, okay so with these two relationships we can substitute in and solve for omega so I'll, I'll do that 
Okay, and now I've substituted this in. So you see we've got um, the weight, the mass times the gravity, big R minus little r, theta squared over 2 is equal to 3 quarters times the mass, times big R minus little r squared, times omega, times the maximum angle theta, and that's squared. Now you can see what will happen here is the thetas will drop out, the masses will drop out, and we can write an expression for this omega. So I'll do that. And we get this where omega is equal to the square root of two-thirds g, that's the gravitational constant, divided by big R minus little r. And the period is going to be 2 pi divided by that. So I've written it here with the answer, the complete answer. The period is 2 pi times the square root of 3 divided by 2 times the quantity big R minus little r divided by g.